be live rolling and what's going on everyone how's it going it's jay here again on another thursday night coffee and cigars ono live live stream number 47 can you believe that 47 we're here broadcasting from cockiesville maryland from our little roasting space here for spro coffee and it's just a, a pleasant day we've had a pleasant 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 week so far tuesday wednesday and today thursday has been really beautiful I mean, like we're talking like 40 percent humidity so it's you can barely feel it nice 75 80 degrees really cool weather beautiful stuff i can't imagine i mean this is kind of the best weather possible maybe a little bit warmer if we push to 85 with this kind of uh, humidity that'd be really nice but this is this is really nice. This is what we this is what I like. If Baltimore summer was like this all summer long, I think it would be the best place in America. But this weekend the hot weather with humidity shall return, so that's for sure going to happen and we'll be back to the typical misery that we have here in Baltimore. So how's it going tonight? What are you guys up to tonight? How was your week? Drop that button below in the comments. What are you smoking and what are you drinking? Bring that along. Did you happen to get the Zeno Nicaragua Toro? Because uh, that's what we're smoking tonight. We're smoking the Nicaragua Toro from Zeno, which is a, a whole new rebranding of their line that's been out for, what, 20 years or something like that? But before we get to that, we're going to, of course, as always, start out with some coffee. We're going to be drinking the Corazon de Jesus. The Finca El Salitre, lot number 25 from Costa Rica. It's grown by a guy named Johnny Alvarado in an area called Chiripo. And Chiripo is about five, six hours drive from San Jose at, um, at probably one of the highest points in Costa Rica. It's at about 22, I mean 20, yeah, about 2,200 meters. Is that right? Uh, oh, 2,000 meters, not 2,200. 2,200, it really becomes very difficult to grow. Uh, and so this is a wash coffee, Katura Katuai, and it's just really a lovely coffee. It's got a lot of like bright notes, a little tropicalness to it. And we tended to give it a lighter roast because we really want to let that pop. And we're kind of, this is the one coffee where we kind of, I guess, cave into the, the more modern third wave taste where it's all about lighter roasts and brighter coffee so we this one i think really holds up well i think this one really shows great as that style of roasting so that's what we do for that and as always we're going to brew our coffee and today we're going to today we're going to use again the avid clever which is the immersion hybrid brewer that i tend to like i know i've used it several times on, on the show here we used it last week i do believe and so we should probably, I should probably bring something else next week, so maybe we'll do that. But let me get that all set up here so that you can see what we're doing. Is that enough? Oh, good goodness, I nearly dropped this bottle of coffee sauce. This is actually an interesting thing. This is a, a coffee sauce, it's called the coffee, it's called coffee sauce from a place called The Coffee House. And it's a Sumida coffee in, um, by Sumida Station in Tokyo, Japan. And I went, I heard about this place and I went there and just really wonderful, like, it, it's kind of this hybrid, like it's not really a kisaten, which is the traditional Japanese style coffee experience. And, and it's not really quite third wave. It's, it's somewhere, it's actually kind of somewhere in between. And uh, they actually had like uh, soft serve coffee that they would uh, soft serve ice cream, like vanilla soft serve ice cream that they would pour this on top of. And I had to buy a bottle. I was there in uh, May of 2019, so about two years ago. And it's just kind of interesting this coffee sauce. So I, I I I bought it and I tasted it several times, but I haven't really figured out what it, what I'm supposed to like. I haven't really thought about really diving into making it. Um, it says it's good until February 20, February 2nd, 2020. <laughs> That's all right. No big deal. All right. So we're going to start brewing our coffee here. So we've got our Clever. Right, the Clever here. Paper filter. 
So what do you guys going on tonight? Anything interesting happening in the world, in your, in your world? Drop that in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. As always, 24 grams of coffee to make a 12-ounce serving. And then we're going to take our water that's just off the boil. All right, here we go. Oh, we need our timer. We're going to set our timer for three minutes. And then start now. So we're, again, like we do in the last times we've used this, we're saturating the grinds, waiting a few moments, letting the coffee steep and bloom. And that blooming is the degassing of the coffee. There's CO2 that's a residual um, part of the roasting process, and that tends to float the coffee. So we want to leave it about 30 seconds for the coffee to float, and then we hit it again with water to push it all down, re-wet the coffee, and make sure it's fully saturated so that all of the, the coffee is immersed in the water so that the extraction can occur and all the solubles can come out. Which is, I guess, kind of the pseudo-scientific way of explaining that. All right, there we go. And we'll just put the lid on top. I think this might be a, this brighter coffee might be a nice touch to go with the the Zeno, and I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> so tonight's coffee is the Corazon de Jesus Finca El Salitre, lot number twenty-five. And Johnny Alvarado is a small grower in Chilipo. He's got this farm, and it's relatively relatively small. Let me I'll pull up the uh, the screen here so you can see it. So this is the coffee, the Finca El Salitre. And uh, this is a, a beautiful coffee from yeah, 2,000 meters, shade grown, fully washed with dr raised dry beds, and uh, Katura Katuai varietal of Arabica. <laughs> and it's available on our website, spurrowcoffee.com, for 1750 or if you get it on the subscription service, you get 10% off, so it's fifteen seventy-five for the, the, the bag. So it's a really great deal. Nice way to get the coffee. And beautiful. It's a really a fantastic coffee. We'll go through it today and, and uh, talk more about it. Okay, we're brewing our coffee. We're coming up oh, to the last about 40 seconds. You know, here's the, the nice thing. It just kind of sits there doing its thing. You don't really have to mess with it. It just kind of steeps and brews, and then it'll finish. And I think that's really one of the, the, the nicest things about it. Of course, when you're actually making it, it's a little bit, it gets boring. So if, you, if you're used to pour overs and you're always pouring and attending to it and getting really fussy, this is not fussy. This is set and forget. And, you know, it's all, it's all depends what you want. Set and forget is, is, is kind of my, deep, my jam, especially if we're for making breakfast. Oh, there we go. Time's up. Now we're going to pick up the thing, the clever, and place it on top of our little yama bowl here, yama pot, and let it flow in. Of course, giving a little bit of air gap for displacement. We're just going to let it flow. Let it flow down. You can hear it, right? Oh. All right, that's good. That looks good. All right, all right. So we will take this. set it aside and now we've got our coffee all brewed up how do you guys like to brew your coffee at home when you're at home or wherever you like to brew coffee do you use a big coffee brewer you know like the mr coffee kind of thing or are you using something else you know espresso machine or something let me know drop those in the comments love to know about it all right so we've got our coffee here pouring in this is the if you're just joining us thanks for joining us this is the corazon de jesus finca el salitre lot 25 from costa rica 
it is a washed coffee with uh, and dried on raised beds with uh, a blend of Katua, Katura and Katuai uh, Arabica varietals. And this is a high grown coffee. It's about 2,000 meters from Costa Rica. And it has, it, well, it typically has nice, bright, tropical notes. And it's something that we kind of roast a little bit on the lighter side to really push that and take advantage of it, you know. All right, Rusty says he's drinking a French press. He makes French press at home. Excellent. Rusty, how do you like to make your French press? I mean, do you use uh, similar, um, what's it called, brew ratios? All right, let's see. Mm, there's a nice tropical light citrusy nose to it. Of course, there's also a little bit of light cacao, like a brighter cacao. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So in this particular brew, where I was expecting it to be a lot more, a lot brighter, this has a lot more of cacao notes to it. Cacao, maybe a little bit of toasted bread. Well, maybe that's a little bit too early to get into. Well, we'll go, go along. It's a bit on the hot side still. So we will continue with the the show, the show, and uh, all right, so that's good. Now that we've got the coffee out of the way, we're going to smoke our cigar, which is from Tobacco Leaf as always. So if you need cigars, give Raul a call at Tobacco Leaf down in Jessup, Maryland, or go visit. It's a great little shop if you haven't been there. A lot of nice seating areas, outdoor, indoor. We tend to go there quite a well, I'm a little bit far away, but I tend to go there quite often. So we have the Zeno Nicaragua Toro. Oh, let me change this. Uh, here we are. There we are. Zeno Nicaragua Toro. Mm -mm, zoom. There we are. In the cello. So from what I was reading, this is a re-release of a, of a current running cigar, uh, for of a cigar that's been running for to, over 20 years. And... I think they, I think Zeno wanted to get, or Davidoff wanted to get more life and a little more excitement out of it because from their own website, as they describe this. Oh, hold on, Sam is here. So George is here. Hey, George, what's going on? Good evening. Can you tell us what impact raised bed drying and techniques impart? As for brewing it for one cup pour over. Okay, great. So there's many uh, there's many ways of doing it right and so basically uh, i mean there's many ways of drying coffee and so the raised bed is something that that's actually been imported from africa and a lot of in in kenya ethiopia they had these raised beds where they basically would create these wooden frames that they would stretch netting type of material over and dry the coffee there and, and in, typically in in africa where there was a lot less water they would do what's called a natural process, meaning that they would just harvest the cherries whole and then dry them in the sun on these raised beds. And what the raised beds, of course, give it airflow on both sides, on, you know, up, above and below. So it, it's a more even and a little bit faster of a drying, whereas um, in a lot of what, in a lot of uh, Central America, traditionally they use patios, concrete patios or perhaps on grass or on tarps, where they, they rake it out, and then they have to rake it every hour for several days. And the drying can take up to two weeks. So you'll, you'll rack it, or you'll rake it out and dry for about two weeks every, probably raking, well, in the, when it's in the sun, raking about every hour. And then the other way to do it, the final, well, I guess not the final, but the, one of the bigger ways of doing it that a lot of places will use is uh, mechanical drying. So they have these big mechanical drums, big, big, massive drums, and they'll place the coffee in, inside and then heat it. And, and, you know, you can use that. We do use that for specialty coffee. In, in those situations, we're looking to keep the temperature of the flame, the heat source, 90 degrees Celsius or below. No, I'm sorry, 90 degrees Fahrenheit or below. That would be a lot. Um, is that right? 90 degrees Celsius? Maybe it is 90 degrees. Maybe it is 90, it is 90 Celsius. Oh. oh, now I have to look. 
Anyway, so it's 90. On the dial, it's 90. And so I'm thinking that we're in Central America most of the time, so that's all typically Celsius. So it's got to be that. Or is it 45 Celsius and it's 90? Uh -huh. It's 90. I will find out for next week and, and make sure that I know for sure. But basically, um, once you get above that temperature, then you're really drying it really, really fast, and that can affect the quality um, of the coffee when you're drying mechanically. So we tend to stay away from that kind of processing. And, you know, when, when you work with, with uh, great growers and producers, for the most part, they won't participate in, in that, that kind of fast, hardcore kind of drying. So you don't really have to worry about that with some producers, you know, or some what we call beneficios, where these are um, dry process, or these are processing plants where you'll take the coffee after harvest and they'll do the processing for you. So there's a lot of ways to approach it, but typically the raised bed gives you greater airflow above and below the coffee so it's more even and a little bit faster. I don't know if it's tremendously faster. I'll have to ask, I'll have to ask about that. I will ask. Uh, Rusty might know a little bit more because his his sister does that. His, him and his mom and his sister are, are growers in Ka'u, Hawaii, and uh, we probably should ask them. I'll have to give Joe a call. All right, so back to what we're saying with the Davidoff Zeno Nicaragua Toro. So it's you know this is like a like I said it's a, it's supposed to be a re-release or a rebranding of a pre-existing cigar and. This is what they say on their own website. It says, Zeno Davidoff was an adventure and pioneer in the cigar world. He loved to discover and enjoy life to the fullest. Inspired by his personnel, we have developed a cigar line that reflects his spirit and zest for life. Discover the unique cigar experience with notes of dark chocolate, cream, coffee, and more. A filling moment ever so unique. The medium to full body Zeno Nicaragua cigar is available in three formats that offer distinctive aromas of cedar wood, coffee, and fresh spices. Whew. That sounds good. That sounds good, right? Yeah, that sounds good. We're going to try it. We're going to find out. You know, the interesting thing is that since this is a rebranding and with new packaging, so as you can see, let me show you that packaging here. It, it's on this site as well. So it's got this funky, like, fresh, hip, modern yellow color to the box and this yellow banding with the big Z that's like Zorro. You know, so it's kind of, you know, it... it the nice thing about the yellow is that, you know, if you're in the humidor, this should stand out pretty well. Actually, that's probably the reason why I did select this for the show, is that it, it just kind of popped. You know, when there's a whole sea of white bands that you already know that are like, oh, that's to 30 bucks, I don't want to afford that. And then you see this, that's actually a lower price. But so these are supposed to be the affordable Zeno or Davidoff. So they're... Price in between six dollars to seven. Is that right? Let me see. Where do they have the? Uh, there's something here that said the. Oh, is on this one. There it is. Six dollars to seven. Yeah, six to seven. So here in Baltimore or in Maryland, that translates to about eight dollars for this cigar. So not. I mean, not expensive, by any means. And, uh, but you know, we have the OTP in Maryland, so we have to to live with this. Anyway, so let's get into it. Here we are. So the band is, I think the band is attractive. And the wrapper looks pretty good. So this is an Ecuador, Connecticut wrapper with a binder that's a Nicaraguan binder, Semilla 56 Seco. And then the fillers are Nicaraguan Ometepe Visus. Honduras Olancho Visus and Hamastran Visus from Honduras as well. So Honduras, Nicaragua, and Ecuador made in the Dominican Republic. I'm guessing this is uh, made by Heinrich Keller. Is that right? What do you think, George? Heinrich Keller? This? Maybe? Maybe not. Inting says, Ban reminds me of, oh yes, the La Barba. Very similar, very similar. I think that Davidoff probably got their inspiration from them. So we've got light, smelling the wrapper, we have light, light hints of manure, barnyard, that kind of, you know, that, that kind of flavor we, we get. But actually, which is interesting, like last week's cigar, which was a Connecticut 
uh, Connecticut shade. It didn't have this kind of character. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> All right, let's cut. We're going to cut now, and we're going to cut with the Zycar MTX. The Zycar MTX is my official cutting tool, and I, I've learned about this first when I went to Tabsa factory with uh, Paul Palmer and, uh, and Eugenio Ramos, and they were using this at the factory tasting room. And I just thought it worked so well, and it was just a fantastic way to cut. So I bought it. I ran out. The moment I flew home, I bought one. And I've been using it ever since. So this particular cutter is, what, 2014? Seven years old? And it's, it still cuts well. Like, it doesn't cut as sharp as it used to. I keep thinking that maybe I should call Zycar and say, hey, can I get, a, can I get it sharpened or replaced? But... You know, it's a nice cutter. If you if you like it, get one. So George says Zenu are made at the OK Cigars, which is an ah OK non Davidoff factory. Oh OK, so everything that's non Davidoff is made at OK. Whereas OK, I got it. I think I get it. I'm gonna say I got it. Maybe I did it. <laughs> of course, they draw the same quality tobacco from Trusted. Oh, nice, nice. So Mark's asking, is manure a desirable odor for wrapper? You know, that's the crazy thing about cigars is that for some, like I was talking about this on several shows ago, it's like you have this cigar and it smells like manure, right? And you think, why would that ever be of interest? Why would, that, why would you think that that's a great thing? But you know what? There's strangely reassuring this manure -ness. it's not like a pungent manure like why well, i don't know why we use manure like it there's no way to like really say that manure is like ever since you watch back to the future manure just has a bad connotation right but okay so i guess i guess to a certain extent it is like it, like it, you don't you wouldn't think that it's a good thing in regular life but in cigars Barnyard, maybe barnyard's better, like that barn, kind of, but again, manure barn, it's all the same. Or it's all mixed together, right? <sighs> yeah. Well, trust me on this, it's, it's, ple it's, it's pleasant and intriguing. Maybe that's it. It's an intriguing aroma in a cigar, on the wrapper. Perhaps not, we wouldn't want, I don't think we'd want to describe the flavor of the cigar, as manure, but certainly the wrapper aroma is not bad. That's not a bad thing. And so George says the Zycar is a terrific tool. But you, so is, am I supposed to sharpen it? Like with a file or? Because like this, the way that it works, this one, this one side here, right, is flat. But this other edge is where the, the sharpening happens. So, I mean, it's not, after seven years of use, it's not, um, it's not like it, it's, it's not tearing at the wrapper, although it could be tearing soon. Like you kind of, it does give a little bit of a pinch on the wrapper. You might have seen that. And then these tools are a little bit loose now, so they're always kind of flopping around. But it's been a good, it's been good. Oh, so Mark does like this flow. Yes, yes, I mean, I, it's a nice, it's a nice smell. And then George says, if it smells like the business end of a barnyard, it has. <laughs> What, we don't like we don't like Lars Tetons or the uh, the Cuba Cuba. I mean, there was a time when we used to smoke Cuba Cubas a lot, like when they first came out, when Marvin first brought them out here to Baltimore with uh, with Scott Chester, the acid, you know, acid, and uh, you know, we kind of enjoyed them. The Cuba Cuba was kind of fun to smoke, but you know, it kind of fell out of favor. Yeah, kind of a sweet, earthy smell. I mean, that's probably the best way to talk, to describe it. All right, so let's cut into it. We got, we got, let's get into the, I need to drink a little more. All this talking is leaving me parched. All right. So our cold drawing. Oh, there's some sweetness there. There's some sweetness on the tongue, on the palate. 
Maybe it's a little overwhelmed by the coffee. Because other than this kind of light sweetness that I'm getting, that's kind of piercing through the coffee that's on my tongue from taking a sip, I'm not tasting much anything else. Let's see, hold on. Let us get rid of the... Yeah, there's just a light sweetness that... All right, let's light, let's light. So we're gonna roast it, we're gonna roast the tip a little bit. You know, after, George, after we were on, you, we were, did that show a couple weeks back, you know, some of our discussions, if you're, if you're watching, were what Cirillo, George, and I was about, this is after the shows were all done. We, we talked a little bit about roasting techniques, and I've been, intri I've been intrigued, you know, especially since we use these torches now, you know, and so I always think that we're, like, abusing the tips. So I think maybe that's one, one topic we'll have to do in a future episode. Like right now, look, I'm, I'm really close to it, right? Because I'm trying to light it evenly. And then there's this little sliver, that black right there, right? That just, right, right there. Not so tight. Mm. So the initial puffs, oh, very positive, very positive flavor. There's some sweetness, some nice tobacco, sweet tobacco. Her initial puff, very pleasant, very positive, intriguing. Oh, here's something from Dai. Dai says, two shows back when, when George and Thriller were on the show, each of us lit our cigars differently. Yeah, you know, I'm inter I, we really should talk about that next time. You know, when Cirillo was on the show in October, he talked about relighting, right? And I, I mentioned this several times uh, since then, but instead of, like, like, typically when the cigar goes out, my friends and I tend to, like, squeeze and, and squeeze out the the ash content, and then there's always this like little um, chasm, and then you shoot the flame down the chasm and try to light it out, like a little cave, right? And then that just leaves ash flying everywhere for the first few puffs, so it's kind of disastrous. But Cirillo had this technique where he was leaving the ash, leaving the cherry ash, and then just kind of flaming around the edge. And every time I've used that approach, it has worked out really well. So, you know, everybody seems to have everybody seems to have greater depth in lighting than I do. Well, let's see what George says. Light slow and stay cool. Torching, you burn away some. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess we in this modern world we get so impatient. Like, you know, if, we, if to be this far, it just seems so far. Plus, your your like this torch is now starting to heat. Like right here, right here, it's pretty darn hot. We will try that for, for future episodes. More on lighting techniques. So is everybody enjoying nice weather this, these last few days? I mean, here in Baltimore, it's been brilliant. They say that uh, California is under like severe heat, like Vegas is supposed to get to be 117 today. And this hot weather that they're experiencing is supposed to be heading our way, so. You know, it's supposed to be coming across the country, right? So I guess by the weekend, we're supposed to get some pretty heavy heat. So there's nice sweetness. There's a nice sweetness that's on the tongue and good tobacco flavor. Not necessarily, well, there's maybe, right now there's maybe a little bit of hint of tropical notes. Maybe like light pineapple. But really, 
that pineapple, I'm hunting for that. I'm hunting to find a descriptor. So it's pleasant. It's got nice tobacco. It's got some sweetness to it. It's a little bit on the juicier side on the palate. But right now it's, play, it's performing like one of these cigars that if I was to give you all kinds of florally descriptions, I'm really just trying to hunt for them. I'm really trying to find the really minute, like cherry, pineapple. I don't, they're not terribly apparent. Like I really have to sit here and think on my palate. Like, yeah, I, I could describe that as pineapple. I could describe that as kind of tart cherry. Maybe rose petals. No, I'm not a rose petal. I'm just kidding about that. I'm kidding about the rose petals. So George says, use a soft flame, take it easy, and enjoy the initial light. Or you can use matches and not worry about using more than one. Either way, good point, good point. Normally, I, I, well, lately I have been trying to use more matches. And, and really, it's, it's more because I have this little drawer, right, that has all these matches that I have from years ago. That I think, I'm thinking, my gosh, why do I have all these matches? Why have I kept all these matches all these years? Why? I don't know. I need to get rid of them. So I started using them. Then I started coming across something like this, like this Davidoff matchbook, right? From the old Faders. Faders is, is now defunct for several years. Do I now burn them? Or it, and that's it. The history's dead. 125 years of Faders is gone. And I'm going to burn up their cigars? Oh, I don't know. Or, or like this one from Tao. Tao, if you recall, is that uh, fancy nightclub from Vegas that opened back in, what, 2005? I think I, I, I must have got this at the opening because I, I've never been there since the opening. I don't even know if it's still there. So, you know, it gets, it gets a little bit foolish like that. Like, do I want to, like, yeah, of course I need to smoke. I need to burn them. I need to burn them up. So, Dives asking, does the butane of the torch affect the taste? From what I've been told and from what I've experienced, it doesn't, I don't think it does because butane's tends to burn clean. It's the, the fuel oil, like in the zip, the, or the classic Zippos that will impart um, aromas to the cigar. I mean, George might have a little more in. Insane, uh, insight onto that. Oh, and there it is. Let's see what he's saying. So butane is tasteless and odorless, but the higher heat of a torch is the danger. Yeah, matches have a sense of some of nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. The matches are nice. Yeah, the matches, you know. If you go to Tobacco Leaf, they have these matches. And these are kind of stylish. Like, it's all black, right? Even the wood is dyed black. And they're pretty long. You know, which is, is a nice, that's a nice touch. I really got into long cigar matches uh, because of a guy named Tony Scott. And Tony was a director that I worked for back in uh, 1997. And uh, we did a movie, I did a movie with him called Enemy of the State. And Tony, great guy, but he's kind of a degenerate cigar smoker. <laughs> and I mean that in the best way, with all the love possible for Tony. Um, great director to work for, really passionate, really into what he's doing, and just really s s created a great environment to work with, and collaborative and everything. And so, but Tony loved Monte Cristo number twos. He would smoke those nonstop, regardless of the time or day, right? We could start at 2 in the morning, we could start at 5 in the morning, we could start at midnight, 8 o'clock, 5 p.m., and throughout the entire shoot, and we're talking like uh, on movies like that, we're working, you know, on that movie, we probably did 18 hours a day on average, and he would smoke from call to rap, nonstop, chain smoking them. And it was Tony that was like, hey man, you need to use these. And he had those Davidoff long matches with the I guess they're just dyed to look like they're cedar, but or maybe they are cedar, but he turned me on to those, and he was like, you need to use these, because I was smoking on, because back then, we could smoke on set, and on his set, you could, everybody smoked, right? So 
we were smoking and Tony was like, you need to use these matches. And I was like, oh, all right, man, all right. So that's the, the first time that I ever got to, uh, th that's how I got introduced to the long match. Yes, Ridley's brother, what a sad, it was sad. Like when I heard that he had, he had uh, jumped from the San Pedro Bridge in, uh, uh, in San Gabriel, just outside of Long Beach, man, that was just shocking. To, I think it was shocking to most people. I was just talking to a buddy of mine who is in town who's, uh, who does post-production sound for, for the movie business, and uh, yeah, just tell me more about what they think it could have been. But he was a great guy, a great guy. Miss him a lot. Mm. Always the same, year after year, yes, yes. Wait, which cigar? You mean this, the, the Zeno or the, the Davidoff? The Davidoff for sure. Mm. Tony says those, sad those long, those Davidoff long matches no longer exist. That, oh, they don't make them in, that's a shame. That's, they were cool. I mean, they were kind of, I think, I'm sure they were pricey. Like, I'm trying to think of, you know, I, I'm, sure we, I'm sure I bought them. And I'm trying to think of how much I might have spent for them. And they were probably ridiculously priced. Like in, when I was living in Honolulu, we could, well, when I would go back to Honolulu, the week I'd pick them up because there was a Davidoff store. Was there a Davidoff? I think there was a Davidoff store there. I don't even know how I got them. Maybe they had them at cigar shops locally. I, I, oh, I don't remember. It's been so, it's been so long. Good Lord, it's been over 20 years. So what's everybody smoking tonight? Drop them in the comments. Love to hear about them. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate you spending another Thursday here. We're smoking the Zeno Nicaragua Toro from Davidoff. And nice, it's nice, it's smooth, it's, it's not terribly heavy. It's really enjoyable. I mean, this is, I mean, I, I'm tempted to say this is like Davidoff white label quality but I don't which I'm, I'm sure it's not because why would they sell something they could sell for 30 bucks for seven but I am enjoying it it, it is lighter uh, brighter juicy acidic kind of smoke so far oh yes yes Tony did always have every day like you know the <laughs> The, the uh, prop master was telling me, he was like, because I guess the prop master was, some of the crew, the keys on the crew, had been with Tony for many, many movies. You know, they did like Days of Thunder, they did Top Gun, they did all of them. They did a lot of movies over the years with Tony. I was kind of hoped to get picked up along, but I wasn't a department head, so uh, that was a little bit a harder thing. But yeah, they to the guy, he told me that Tony spends he was spending two hundred twenty-five thousand a year on the Monte Cristo number two Habanas that he would get. I think he got them from James Fox. I think that was his purveyor. So he spent quite a bit, quite a bit. So Tony says maybe two fifty back in the day. Yeah, that would, I guess yeah, that's not too much. That's too much. And George says there definitely was a De Davidoff depositaire deposita in Hawaii. Yeah, that was great. I think that was in the Ward Center. You know, even back then, it was still kind of pricey for us, you know, us guys. We would go to that, uh, what was it called? It was called um, Don Pablo. Don Pablo and Kona Street. That's where we went to. And Inting's having a Norteño and Coke for tonight. Which size, in, which size Norteño? You know, Inting, the Diet Coke really is my typical go-to drink for cigars most of the time i'm drinking diet coke i, I like the way that it kind of it, i like i like the caramel caramelliness that goes on i think it goes well with a cigar so george says those match davids were best ever much thicker yeah yeah they were great i think i still have a, a couple somewhere in, in my house a couple, of, you know, maybe a couple of boxes, just individual boxes. I think, I think it's like the, I think it's like these other matches, you know. I got them, but I don't want to use them because now they're old and like classic. It's like, oh, what if I use them all? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's, 
It's a sickness that goes in circles. I'm hoarding matches. Why? Eh, doesn't make any sense. And George is burning another Emilio Escogido. Oh, nice. That's a great cigar. That's, thank you very much for those cigars. Those were excellent. All right, so we're getting here. We're still in the third, first third. And it's, it's, it's fun. It's a fun cigar. Oh, look at the way they did the band. So you can oh, see these guys are smart. They knew that we were going to put this on the live stream and then we would be holding it this way. Those Davidoff people are so smart. All right, there we go. We're going to tap it out, get rid of that so that we don't have to be wor too worried about it. And Danny made his, oh, yes, nice, nice. For, for uh, Tony, yes. I just wonder, I wonder what kind of collection Tony would have had because he went through boxes at a time. Like, I was smoking cheap cigars because, you know, I wasn't the director, so. I didn't make DJA money. I was making IA money, which wasn't bad back then. I mean, they did really, they, when you worked these long shows, and because we were shooting on location outdoors in the winter in December. And of course, December, days are short. So, and they're shooting all, we're doing a lot of exteriors. So we need to like go, go, go. So they would run with what they call French hours. And French hours are basically when there's, so, under union rules, you have to, after you have, you have your call, which when everybody starts work, and then six hours after call, you have to provide a hot sit down meal for, tip, for a minimum half an hour. Typically it takes, they give it a full hour because there's so many in the company that has to get fed. Like there's 150 people at least on set on that show. And they decided to do French hours because we were shooting, we were shooting this, if you remember the movie where they were, Jason Robards gets killed and they put him in the, in, the, in, the, in the reservoir. We shot that here at Lock Raven. And since it was, you know, outside, we need to get as much daylight as possible. So it's French hours. And so it's, they give you a, a walking meal. So they'll provide food on set and you just grab it whenever you can. And when that gets invoked, plus you're past eight hours, plus, and then you get past 12 hours, and man, then the money is just like, the, the, the way the penalties work, it's just like suddenly you're making crazy amounts of money per hour. You're like, this is amazing. I'm tired as all hell, but I'm making crazy money. So Tony smoking the Neanderthal HS and a cherry Pepsi Zero, of course. I'm, why am I not surprised about that? And he says I should be burning them. I guess I'm gonna burn those matches. Doesn't make any sense to hoard them. Mm. So, if I was to compare the body of this Zeno to the Revenge, very different, very, very different. It would be very much like the Revenge is heavier, thicker. The flavor is more powerful, right? Where this is lighter, brighter the body isn't as full but it's still very enjoyable it's enjoyable in a way that's very different than the revenge but not not in a way that's that's um diminished or negative right it's it's very and so far it's been very enjoyable and the revenge so maybe the body from so there's the the BA-21, right, this Revenge. I just, yes, just last night I smoked the, um, the EC, the uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, I was, go I was just about to say the EC, because I had the goodness, which is the box press version of the EC line for Intemperance. And I would say that the body in that is very similar to the body in this. I think from the, like Tony smoking the Neanderthal, I definitely don't think this is anywhere near the Neanderthal as far as like in terms of body and strength. It's, it's that's really different. That that would be very very different. At least from my recollection. 
Mm. So Tony says it's not the usual Diet Cherry Pepsi. It's the Zero. So is it better than the Diet Cherry? And by the way, how's the deck coming along? I'm still, wait I'm still holding on to this uh, rub for the, the brisket. It's in the box over here. So George says, that's what I was after. Your experience at Davidoff Touch, equally complex, but so yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the one nice thing about what I have to say about the Davidoff, like even with the white label, like, like I'm very price, I tend to be very price sensitive. So after we get to $13 or actually $12, well, maybe 10, I start to like balk a little bit, like, like even back in the old days, like in the, in the early 2000s, when we were doing a lot of smoking of the Paul Gamerians and Paul's Bellicosa Maduro is always like $12. Even back in like 2005, it's like $12, oh, $12, good God. Like it's gotta be super compelling for me to go to that level. Even to this day, $12 is still on the higher end for my taste. Like I prefer eight. I prefer the, somewhere around the same price point, right? Because these are great, these two are examples of great performing cigars that aren't terribly expensive, right? And so the, the white label Davidoff, I mean, they're, they're definitely on the pricier side. But every time that I have had them, with the exception of once, my very first one was um, a special tea. Is that right, special tea? The Torpedo. And I bought that maybe 20 years ago at Faders. And I, it, just, it just was plugged, it just had all these problems, so I was really, really disappointed in it. But ever since that time, I have smoked a number of the R's, I guess they're the special R's, right? And um, a few of the other sizes. And every time I've had the Davido, always very enjoyable. Very different, lighter, not so heavy, not so punchy, but just lovely and complex like that. Gertoni says that the diet, uh, the zero Pepsi, cherry is too sweet. Oh. So how many did you get? Did you get like a whole case? And on the deck, should be putting boards down next weekend when parents get back from Cali. You're not waiting for your dad to do that, are you? <laughs> well, let me know. The rub is ready whenever you're ready. Right, so we're rolling along. I'd say, you know, we're still kind of towards the end of the first third. And it's still, it is nice. It's a nice cigar. Very enjoyable. I mean, I have to say, maybe I might have to get, you know, I would, might have to have some for the, the, the home. Oh, specialty was a trouble for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that was probably for the better. For some reason, they just, I, well, I, I can't say that. It was, I'm about to say that for some reason, they, they just were plugged, but I've only had one. So I can't, I can't speak for that they were having problems. But other Davidoffs that I've had of the different lines, like the year of the snake that came out several years ago, that was killer. I really like that. I tend to find that those year of the, of the Chinese Zodiac tend to be pretty good. Like the year, I think they had the year of the ox one year. I think I like that one. But I think the first one they released of that series was The Year of the Snake, and I think that was really enjoyable. <sighs> All right, let's go to the mailbag. So I got this in today. More Amazon. I've been on this kind of tear this past week with, with like, gear for video making. And so I got this. Actually, this one should be something I'm going to use right away. So in the bag, we've got this contraption. This thing. And I know for many of you, this is going to seem like, what the heck is that? This is actually a a boom pole stand, holder. 
And what that means is that you can set your boom pole in here so it sits like that, right? So it, as the, the microphone or as the long end weighs down, it pushes the back of it into this part, right? So it holds it. And this all fits into what we call a gobo head. And the gobo head is this. So when you go, when you watch movies and you see their names, you see grip. What is a grip? Grip is a general worker. They'll do light construction, they'll do set building, they'll do all kinds of stuff. And what part of what they do is they'll set up these things called C stands. And the C stands have these gobo heads on them. These gobo heads are these general kind of devices that go on top of a big C stand. So it'll go on top of the C stand, and then you'll place this. Like if you want to use it for this purpose, you'll place this on there and then tighten it down. Actually, it should go this way, right? Oh, that's not the right one. Uh, there's, there's different holes on the gobo heads. And you'll put them like, th what am I doing? Yeah, it should be like that. And then you'll tighten it down. And then wherever you have something that has the extension on, you always want to tighten it so that this is tightening this way because what you don't, so it could theoretically loosen by twisting, by, by, by lever, by torquing down this way. If it torques down this way, it'll unravel. But if it torques down this way, if it actually pulls down this way, it torques the fitting tighter. And so you'll put this on top of a C, uh, C stand or any kind of stand because these, this part of it, the main part of it, fits into what they call uh, a baby pin. And just, just the different terms, but that's what that's for. And then the other thing in this one is what I've been really waiting for, something from Geekria. Oh, Fern, <laughs> Fern, what's going on? Exactly, fishing rod holder. How are you doing, Fern? For those of you who join us, Fern is an old friend of mine from the paintball days. We played all over the world, championed ourselves in uh, Canada, and had good times, good times. Good to see you, my friend, good to see you. But yes, you could put the fishing rod holder on that. So in this geekery, they have these uh, headphone pads ear pad covers. I have no idea what this is. I guess some kind of cleaning tool. But really what I got it for was for this. This cover for the headphones. See this, if you can see it here, it's a little bit shredded. This pair of headphones, and these headphones are the Sony MDR V600s. And they're kind of, I guess they're kind of old, but old enough so that the the vinyl is coming apart. So this is supposed to wrap around and, re and seal it over and oh, they don't look, oh, it will fit. You just gotta pull really tight. Okay, I guess I won't be able to do that now. Okay, forget that. All right, we'll just do that later. So by next week, when you come when I come on, you'll see that I've got, so I just asked a little bit more. So Fern's saying, if you could put in the pre-drilled holes on the rails at the pier, so you can have, oh, yeah, I like that, dude. Oh. All right, yeah, yeah, so this. Yeah, so that's the pin. So that's the, that's, so, so let me, what I'll do now, so that you'll have the reference point for it. It's called a microphone, I don't know what it's called, hold on. Microphone support holder. Microphone boom pole holder. So if, you, if you're interested, feel free to 
have a look. It's only 18 bucks. And if you have Amazon Prime, which most people do, I don't actually. I'm a little bit of a cheap guy. But as you can see here, it, it, this is, it, so if you want to get that for your fishing pole, that might be something for you to check out. Yeah, what do you think? So this is still smoking nicely. The Zeno Nicaragua Toro, still bright, still kind of juicy. I'm digging it. Duct tape wasn't good. No, no, duct tape. Yay. Sometimes you have to get beyond the duct tape. And then George says that the year of the ox is the current release. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I haven't, I haven't, actually, I haven't tried that one. I'd like to, I'd like to. I haven't, I haven't, I didn't get a chance to get one. I don't know why. Nor do I. Oh. So Tony says he sent a pick to what, your, what, my, what the studio should aspire to be. Let me see here what we have. Oh, I think I can do that. Can I do this on messages? Is that messages or is that messages? Oh. Wow. All right, let me see if I can pull that one up. <coughs> so I can share with the audience. to do it a different way. Here's what Tony sends. Hmm. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, this, this is a nice, that's a nice mastering. I like that. I like that. A villain. Yes, a villain. Chilling like a villain. That's what we need to look like. Yeah. My room here isn't very picturesque. I actually designed this originally as a coffee tasting lab, so it's not terribly pretty, which is why I kind of keep it shrouded in darkness. Because we were born into the darkness. Are right, you the ox is delicious? Don't miss them. All right, I will, I will have to see. Maybe a Raul still has one. I'll have to check it out when I go back there. So what's everybody else smoking tonight? Anything interesting? Anything you're loving, anything you're hating, that would be... A, how about cigars that you hate that you've had? That would be an interesting thing to hear. So if you have any cigars you've hated that you've tasted, drop those in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that, too. I think that might be even more interesting, actually. So we're rolling now into the second third. And still good. It's the, right now, the acidity, the brightness is intensifying. The body is still good. So I'd say it's a medium plus body. The acidity, the brightness is definitely intensifying right at the moment. <laughs> 2001, the Space Odyssey. Or maybe I should wear the Clockwork Orange kind of outfit. I just saw that guy that, what was his name in that movie? The guy with, you know, the guy with the bowler and the, the white jumpsuit. They have a pop vinyl of him now. I just saw that at the local comic book store last weekend. Oh, that's what I've been doing. I've, you know, I go to the comic book store. I have a standing order with them, right? For years now, I've, I've been going to this comic book store, and I have this order of several different comics. And it changes because, you know, not all the ones that I follow aren't like the Marvels or the DCs. I, I just never was really a big follower of those. I've always followed a little bit more of the, the other ones outside of that. Some of the anime series. Um, one of the ones I follow a lot is the Firefly series. And, you know, the, 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 the crazy thing, like the matches, is that I have these standing orders. So a monthly, I'll go down there, pick up my books, and then put them on a shelf. So finally, last weekend, I was like, I need to look at these, right? So I took them all out, stacked them all, broke them down into, like, the different series. And I started re reading. So I sat there for, like, two days reading 
the Firefly series, there was like tw- there was like thirty four books, comic books that I hadn't read in that series. So, I mean, it's it's kind of crazy. So I've caught up on the Firefly, and now I'm looking at the. Well, what else do we have in there? We have uh, Star Trek Voyager with some some series about uh, Seven of Nine. Uh, there is, I think there's a new Blade Runner series. There is. Oh my gosh, I can't even remember what it was. Oh, there's a, the Orville has a has a comic book series. But a lot of these other ones are are not running. Like the Firefly one is running, continuous. The other ones are like maybe like four books, six books, eight books. So they're short run series, which is, which is kind of good. But I don't know if you're a Firefly fan. I mean, I've always been a, a, I've always enjoyed it since I since the movie came out. I didn't really know about Firefly when it was the series on television. I did see the movie and I really enjoyed that. So I went back and, and watched and learned about this series and really enjoyed that. And then I read all the Dark Horse comics and those are good. But this new series by Boom Studios is actually, actually really enjoyable. So it's nice to, have, you know, it, it makes me kind of wonder, like if you're watching it on a, if you're reading it on a monthly basis, and there's always kind of a cliffhanger in each book, right? So if you're only reading it monthly, it's kind of, I wonder if it's harder to remember what happens but when you're reading it nonstop, over two days, 34 books, man, it's really easy to like really get into it. So the scar right now is rolling. It's pretty, it's relatively static, meaning that it's got the nice flavor. It's got the, the good brightness. It's enjoyable brightness. It's an interesting brightness. It keeps the cigar interesting. Also, it's starting to burn a little bit off. Right, you can see that there. I don't know if that's more because I'm puffing harder. What do you think, George? Is, is this kind of burn because you're smoking it too hard, too fast? Alex and the Droogs. Ooh. I'm actually not familiar. I'm not familiar with that. I'm gonna have to get I'm gonna have to check that out. And Dai's asking, you get a new fan. Are we talking about like followers or Airflow fan. Um, I did change. I did add a fan. If you're talking about the fans, in, the, is, so can you hear greater noise? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, if I turn up the volume, I can kind of hear. Yeah. So there is. There is a different fan. So I, I took this long. What are those tower fans that have the, the spinning barrel in it, and I kind of put that above the desk. So the idea is that it, as smoke rises, it will push it into the other space and, and towards the where the exhaust port is. Um, I hope it's not too loud. Is it, is it distracting? Oh, no, no, the smoke. Well, that's a combination of the the way that I have the air input routed as well. So I've got this little panel that I can pull out that gives more airflow from out, well, from another room that's kind of outside. And today I kind of left the, one of the doors open so that cool, the cool air outside will flow through that other room and then up into the, the, the channels where it comes into this one. Otherwise, if I open the door between the other room and this one, it, it defeats the purpose and it doesn't work. So, so good. I'm glad to see that it is flowing better. It, it, is, it is making it more enjoyable. And what, what helps that is also because the weather is nice. You know, when it's really hot and humid, gosh, it's, it could, I'm, I'm always worried about that. It's going to be misery. So Tony says, show yes. Summer glow, hell yes. Most of them are, yes, absolutely, absolutely. My favorite was Marina Baccarin. I always wish that story was able, that the series was able to continue, because I, I was always kind of interested to see what happened to him. But if you are a fan of Firefly, the, this current series of, of uh, books from Boom Studios is actually really, really good. They just started a new series. I, I think it's, a, it's, I think it's a, a parallel series called something New Verse or something like that. I haven't read that yet. That's something I, I have like four books. It's only, it only started this year. 
there's four books left. Or there's four books so far. Yeah, the burn has gone funky. Might be the youth factor. I mean, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, you know how some were... Oh, oh, gotcha. Oh, Cockroach Grind. Okay, sorry. I'm all, be, I'm all like, you know, beyond. Yeah, you know how sometimes you get that real heavy canoeing? This, it's not really threatening. You can see the bend in the ash. But so far, it's not, it is not impacting in a negative way. Oh, nice. I've always wanted to do the ASMR, so maybe we should do that. A little bit of cigar smoking ASMR. There's a nice, soft, sweet acidity to the cigar. Medium body, plus body. The Serenity movie added closure to, yes, yes, I agree. Although it's sad to see, like, Wash get killed, although the, well, and Wash and Book get killed, that's kind of sad, you know. I actually ran into Ron Glass. Or, or the actor who played Book. We were at a restaurant in L.A. years ago, Mrs. like 10 years ago we were there. I think it was at Providence. And he walked in and I was like, oh my gosh, there's Book. <laughs> I was actually terribly excited, terribly excited. Every once in a while I'll see someone that I really like think is pretty amazing. All right, so it's getting a little bit, the, uh, the, the smoking, the burn is getting a little bit, it's like dying, you can feel it. You know, sometimes when you're, when you're puffing on it, you feel that you, you've gotten used to this certain amount of resistance and smoke, and that just suddenly like kind of dies down. That's just what happened that last puff. And now it's gotten a bit astringent. Astringent astringency is coming across the palate. Maybe this is the difference between the white label and this series. Is that? No, I don't know. That I'm speculating. But maybe there's that doesn't happen on the white label, right? Like I, we did this dinner with Raul that when he had the at Roots Chris where he had the Davidoff, and I don't remember. And he, we had three different white label Davidoffs, I think, or two different white labels, and none of them had that kind of sharpness right there. So let's see what happens. Oh yeah, absolutely. Always a fanboy of uh, Firefly. I do enjoy science fiction. You know, Firefly and what else has been out there recently? The Resident Alien. Oh, since speaking of Firefly and Wash. And uh, Alan Tudyk, he's the main character in that series, Resident Alien, which is also based off of a comic book, from what I understand. That was a good episode. That was a good series. First season, I think they're renewing it. And Dice says, there were some Firefly Easter eggs in Castle. So if you're not familiar with Castle, Castle was... So, so after Firefly, Firefly ended... The lead actor in Firefly, who I can't remember, his name escapes me at the moment. Anyway, he was he was the main character in Castle, where he played this writer that was uh, working with the NYPD with uh, Katya Stanek's character, and they had some episodes where there were Easter eggs of Firefly, and you know this tells you how much how geeky I can get about that is that. You know, the, the blue gloves for the blue sun people, I saw that. But I think the best one was when he wore the Mal outfit for a Halloween. That was really, that was really great. That was really great. So George says exactly. The difference of age of the tobacco and the resting time with Kwan. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you can, you can see the difference now. <laughs> oh, you didn't like it? I enjoyed it. I liked, what was that? I, I can't remember the name of the, the, the girl, the main character, the Indian girl. She was, I thought it was, I thought it was funny. 
I mean, not the most clever series possible, but I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But I hear you. Nathan Fillion, yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then Loki started well. They renew oh, they are renewing Resident, Resident, Resident Alien. Nathan Fillion as well. Okay, yes, yes, you're right. Nathan Fillion. Although I, I hear different things. Like, you know, there's a lot of rumors from uh, a Castle set that Nathan was really difficult to work with. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but... Evidently, him and his co-star, Katya Stanek, didn't get along very well at all. All right, so we're getting to this point here in the cigar. It's moving into this, the third third, the last third. So let me just uh, take this band off. The band off comes pretty well. Bands off, dance off. Unband it just for... Uh... And Tony types faster than, than George. <laughs> Don't inhale your cigar. That's not a good thing. But Loki, Loki's second episode dropped, what, today or yesterday? I haven't had a chance to see yet. My cousin posted about it. He said it's, I guess it has his favorite scene of all the Marvel movies and TV shows in it. So I'm, I'm interested to see it. I saw last week's episode. I, I really enjoyed that. Those guys are good with the cliffhangers. Like just at the end of Loki, you're at that point where you're like, "Oh yeah, time to go, time to go." Oh, well, show's over. Oh man, it's terrible. Oh, and my other show that I follow that I, that that moved to it moved to Wednesday night yesterday. I haven't seen it yet either. But the blacklist. So the blacklist is coming up to its last episode of the season. So the, the yesterday's episode, and then they, so they move from Friday to Wednesday, and then next one, next week Wednesday is going to be the very last. Oh, so Tony uses the mic and edits the stupidity. You know, I can't use it like my phone, Siri. She doesn't talk to me. She doesn't like to talk to me. She doesn't listen. She doesn't do anything. So I, 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 I can't. I can't. I don't. I. We have a bad relationship. Oh, yeah, Sarah Tomko. I, I do like her. I do like her. And then I came to really enjoy the, the blonde girl, her friend from high school, the one that worked, the, the bartender that, that liked uh, Alan Tudyk's character early on. I, I came to really like her towards the end of the, the run. All right, so we got our bright cigar. And now that the coffee's cooled, it's still got a heavier cacao note and doesn't have that heavy brightness that I was expecting. Mm, interesting, though. Who is red? Red in, in Resident Alien or red as in Bruce Willis and Morgan Freeman in that movie? With uh, with uh, Helen Mirren and uh, her Russian lover and that uh, that crazy John Lith not John Lithgow but uh, the guy with the pig I remember that you know so Tony says Siri and I are also at odds oh Mike out more bike input on the keyboard. Oh, red. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm blabbling on about blacklist. I can say red. Or, oh, who's red? Duh. <laughs> you know, I really thought that, uh, oh, yeah, Malkovich, John Malkovich, yes. Being John Malkovich. That was a great movie, too. Um, yeah, who is red? Red. Well, evident well, in the last ep the the previous ep the last Friday episode two weeks ago. He did admit he was entertained, but but what really when Red when when Red admits something, what does that mean? That really doesn't mean anything. That guy will like say all kinds of crazy stuff. So he said yes. So when when Liz says, "Are you you're entertained?" He's like, "Yes, I am entertained." You know, he's kind of a unreliable narrator. 
because you don't really know. Like, so supposedly this next, this episode that was yesterday was sp supposed to be the time when he's starting to reveal a lot of the questions behind um, who he is and what's been going on. And which makes me wonder, like, in The Blacklist, one of the things that's kind of fueled the, last, the eight seasons is those questions of who is Reddington, why is he involved with Liz, what is Liz to him, and how that all fits together. And, you know, so if they, if they really were to reveal everything, all these big questions we've had since the first episode, it kind of makes me wonder, like, if they do that, then where does the series go and how will they progress from here? That, 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 that's interesting to see. Yes, yes, you're right. I got it. <laughs> yes, the big nose should, are, are definitely warranted in this respect. <laughs> Not sci-fi, but you should check out Warrior. On, you know, some other people have said about that. I, I, will, I will have to check that out. Sometimes I'm, I'm like always kind of finding that it's like, I only have a little bit of time to watch things, so I'm like always trying to cram it in. So hopefully I'll get to that. Like I just finally got the first season of the Handmaiden's Tale. Handmaiden's Tale? And like, I, I saw, so the only reason I'm really fam familiar at all with The Handmaiden's Tale is that, you know, in some of the United flights, they would have The Handmaiden's Tale, like maybe from like the third series or fourth series or whatever it was, when I, like it was like two years ago that I saw it. And I saw like maybe four episodes and I was pretty intrigued. It seemed like an interesting show. And I kind of, and I, I just heard that from other friends that the new season has started but since I have no, I don't really know what's going on, I got the first season and I'm, I'm planning to go through it soon, soon. But evidently Spader isn't actually red. Yeah, yeah, I think we've, they've touched on this in the past. So evidently there was a red Reddington that, how was it going, how was it going? Red Reddington was a Navy officer, Naval Intelligence, who was working in Russia and maybe he was, maybe he did turn and then read, I think what his, I think supposedly his name was Elia and he somehow took Reddington's, maybe he murdered Reddington or Reddington was killed and then he assumed Reddington's ident identity. I think that's what they had said like maybe like three or four seasons ago. So at one point they, they kind of, revealed that Red or Spader, his character was um, Liz's father. And then they, 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 so they came out and said that he's Liz's father, then they overturned that. I think they overturned that when they revealed that Reddington, that Spader wasn't really Reddington, I think. So Dice says, the truth is out there. <laughs> yes, yes, nice way to bring Fox into this, nice, nice. He's actually the Dread Pirate Roberts. Oh, that would be, that would be excellent. That would be kind of funny if he was like to roll, roll down the hill, as you wish. Did you guys see that, um, they had that special about, um, about the Princess Bride with with a lot of the, the, the cast, Carrie Eels and um, uh, what's her name, the woman, Robin Wright, and, and a number of the other characters. I, I don't know if you saw that, but that was really kind of fun, especially if you enjoyed the, the movie. Robin Wright was in Baltimore for several years while they were shooting um, House of Cards. I never did get to see her around. But it's kind of hard to imagine her, like she's all like hard and tough. And to think that she was Buttercup, it's like, she was Buttercup. It's like, wow, she was Buttercup. I can't believe it. You know, I was supposed to go do a, a set tour. So, I, so one day I was talking to our business agent in our union and uh, at our local. And since, uh, since they shoot or they shot uh, House of Cards in our jurisdiction. You know, he's the BA that runs the, that's on the show, or that was overseeing a lot of our crew. So he was like, hey man, you wanna go check out the set one day? And I was like, yeah man, I would love to go see the White House set. Because they were up in Bel Air. 
And then um, I kind of took my time. I was like, you know, we have time. And, and then the whole Kevin Spacey scandal came out. And then everything changed. And never did get to see the set. HBO did a documentary on Andre the Giant a few years back. Yeah, Andre died, like, back in the, was it back in the 80s? Would have been nice to have met him at some point. All right, we're reaching this point here. And this point in a cigar is, tends to be where I start to, to have difficulty. I don't, I don't know if you guys experience this. And I really do think that now it's the proximity of the burning smoke to my nose. Because right around this point is on, on most any cigar now is where I start to have a little bit of more trouble. Meaning that, for some reason, as I'm puffing, I'm also inhaling some of it, which causes a gag reaction. So I kinda have to slow down. I don't know if there's, if I'm losing some kind of function in my trachea of blocking out the smoke so when I'm puffing I'm also inhaling a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if you guys experienced that. Now what else did I get this week? So I'm about to show you this also here. Like I said, I've been getting all this stuff this past week. I got this. This is a little tripod for cameras and it's this it i found about found out about this on, on this guy's channel that i follow this guy named potato jet who does a lot of camera gear reviews <coughs> see i'm starting to inhale that but it's got this tripod and it just has this it's just got this really well construction build and it's got this crazy ball head that you can take off right and it's just super, like, like after I, it's, it's 150 bucks from a place called PGY Tech. And it's actually, man, the construction quality is really, really nice. Like, I'm really, really surprised. I mean, of course, it's 150 bucks. And it's got this little thing that you can pull out so you can kind of hang it. Like, like you would hang it and it'd go against something so you could kind of mount your camera in unique ways. So it's got a lot of functionality that was really interesting. Uh, yes, yes. So George says, if you try to smoke too much of the final third, you're... So does that mean that we should stop at this point or something? Or just go much slower? Because what I find with cigars, especially ones that I like, like this one or... Let's say the, the revenge, you know. Cigars that I'm enjoying really, really a lot, I tend to smoke. Like, you just want to keep smoking them. And, and uh, yeah, I wonder if I'm just going too fast. Need buddies, Kona Silent and Spart Exhaust. <laughs> that would be cool. I still like that idea. So you guys may not have heard this, but like, our friend Buddy had this idea of, like, remember those old... A beauty salon, you'd sit in a big, big chair and they'd have this big dome that would come and dry your hair, like women would use it. And the idea was to get one of those, reverse it, create a vacuum so that as you smoked, it would suck it up. Of course, it's, it's so tight on your head that it's going to run up your face, which is probably not what you want. But we did find one at this, uh, this used store couple years back and I was tempted to buy it and, but it's really heavy and bulky so I decided not to I didn't know where, where was I gonna put this thing that would be crazy but I, I got this I got that boom pole holder because I ordered this kit from this company called Movo and I'll show you this it's supposed to be what they call a location sound kit and what it is it's a it's a blimp and boom pole combination. I actually made a live stream about it uh, on Tuesday, I think it was, that you can see on the channel if you're interested. But I figured I'll just show it to you now since we've got it here. Yeah. 
But this this is the blimp. And now you've probably seen something similar to this in in behind the scenes of movie shows. And basically what this is, it's a windscreen. So inside this housing is a shotgun microphone. You can kind of see it right there, that little, that's a Audio-Technica 4073 short shotgun microphone. And so what this does, it, it isolates the microphone from wind noise. And so you put this in here and it kind of isolates it and kind of keeps it quiet so that any kind of wind will be dampened and won't give that kind of kind of noise, right? And so there's actually something called the dead cat or the wombat that you put over it like this. And I'm sure you've seen this, this, this setup. But, you know, there's a company called Rycoat that makes these that, are, that most real professionals use. And um, they're pretty expensive. You know, right could start probably like seven, eight hundred dollars for this. But I saw this in their in Movo's catalog a while back, ninety nine dollars. And um, I did an initial test run with it, very light, and it, it seems to work pretty well. And the construction quality is quite nice. There's another company called Rode that makes this kind of product, also at a lower price point. Rode is like three hundred dollars, but this is ninety nine. And um, I think this has a lot of uh, features that, in some ways, I think are better than the road. But um, yeah, so if, um, uh, not that any of you guys are really going to be needing some of these, but if ever you do need it, I think the Movo is nice. It's supposed to come with a boom pole, this carbon fiber boom pole, which I have no idea whether it's really nice or not. But unfortunately, in the in the packaging, the the guy wh whoever packed it made a mistake and put this uh this other thing this this other item in it so i called the company and they were like oh yeah yeah i'm so sorry well we'll take care of it and send back our, our so it was actually a camera slider which is this thing where you mount a camera on it and it will smoothly move across a plane and i was hoping that it'd be like heavy enough and cumbersome enough that they wouldn't want me to send it back but they sent me an rma for it so i I sent it back on yesterday, and so eventually I'll get this pole, and it should be pretty cool. And, and like I said, like I'm using it for that stand holder. So, you know, boom poles are designed in a certain way so that it reduces handling noise. So as you're using it, as you're holding it, hand holding it, you know, it's not going to transfer noise. And there's there's different features. So like you can get like a a, a decent professional boom pole by like K Tech or something starts usually around five hundred dollars and then goes goes exponentially up from there you know this one the whole kit with the boom pole and the the blimp is a uh, 215 dollars so it's a really great deal and since i'm using it in a static setting so if i'm going to use it at all i'm going to put it on that microphone that boom pole holder and then fly it over in a in a studio in a studio setting so it's not there won't be any handling noise. So I don't have to worry so much about the handling noise. Um, so that's kind of why I went that direction. Oh, and George saw the live stream. Great, great. Yes, we're trying to do a more unboxing. It's always fun. And then so George says, just for, uh, back, going back to the cigar smoking thing, the final third, just stop, wait a few minutes and light up. Oh, light up a fresh one. I like that. <laughs> Puffing one. The trick is to resist going too far. Yeah, that's that's so true. That's so true. But I, I've also found that if I wait, like I did just a few moments there, it does kind of keep it nice, ro nicely rolling. And Fern says, I met Andre at a bar after a wrestling show in '85. Oh, nice, cool guy, but not big as person. Oh no, okay, okay. With the Iron Shake, my gosh. That is some old school throwback right there. Like with Hulk Hogan. Okay, so I, I knocked it out again. And so we've got, it, it kind of popped out so that the, it's got that, that kind of like chasming going on, that, that caving. All right, so I'm going to try to relight it. 
because, you know, on our show, we want to go all the way to the bitter end. And this is kind of where the acridity comes in because, you know, you're burning it so hard. It's like I'm desperate to keep it going. Not bad, not bad. It definitely is getting that a little, the acridity is increased a little bit because of that real light. I'm not getting too much sour yet on it. So Tony, how's that um, Neanderthal working out for you tonight? And Inting, are you? What are you smoking tonight? Did you did you say already? Let me go back and look here. Oh, tunneling. Yes, yes. That's. What well, is? But is that called? I guess. Yeah. I guess it would be called tunneling. I always think of tunneling as more of that extreme case when it's really just burning down the center rather than just a little bit, because it, it seems like it's just like the cherry part, but definitely it gets that harshness. So there's definitely a harshness now because of that, although it's not, it's not terrible. It's not too heavy. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's a good cigar. You know, smoking this does make me think that maybe I would like to go out and maybe this weekend grab a, one of the Davidoffs, that, a similar size, just to see, like, the performance difference between the two, because I think there's probably similar flavor characteristics, but I'd, I'd be interested to see the difference in performings. Oh yes, Inting's burning that Norteño. How is that Norteño coming along? And then Tony says, I don't have the accidental inhale as my exhaust vents or whatever. So, well, you know, it's not, it's not that the, um, for me it tends to be that even as it's just sitting, the smoke is just right here, I still catch some of that. Which is why I think I tend to be, like as you can see, the smoke is, to me, the smoke's performance is, pr is moving pretty well, which is why I think that I tend to be a little bit more sensitive than most people in a smoky environment where, where unless it's really moving, like, I tend to be a little bit more affected by uh, smoke than other people. Like, I remember when we were younger, like, I, it never bothered me. Like, I, we could be in a pretty heavily smoky room that but now if it's really heavy, uh, it, it, does, it does bother me. So George says that that is canoeing. Okay, okay, got it. When it's burning down the center, got it. Oh, I didn't realize that that was it. Okay, I've always thought the canoeing was when it was just burning on one side, okay. And Tony says, I just burned, remove, burned my fingers removing the bands of the Neanderthal HS, which I think is part, you know that, that whole thing where you have to take that band and pull it like, I, honestly, when Skip first said that like, years ago, he was like, yeah, you got to pull it over the burning end. I was like, that just sounds craziness. What, <laughs> what kind of thing is that? But I do think now, now, after years later, I think that the burning of your fingers as you remove the, the Romacraft bands is part of the Romacraft experience. Like, you're not really smoking Romacraft until you've kind of singed your fingers. Which I think maybe my, by, is by des, is part, maybe by design on the part of Skip and, and Mike. Maybe the idea is that you're singeing your fingers 
So you're burning off your prints, right? So that when you finally get to the point that you go to Panerai and you steal the Panerai, when they run the cameras and they run the, the prints, they can't run it on you because your fingers are now burned. I think that's what it is. So Tony says he has both fans running, so it goes up as soon as he exhales. Oh, nice. Yeah, if you guys have the chance, Tony's got this room at his house. It's kind of a, actually, it's kind of a smoking house rather than just a room that has a really heavy-duty exhaust. And he will be smoking till he's, yeah, <laughs> I think that's the, that's the true measure of how much you're enjoying a cigar, is when you're holding it and you're just a, you're trying not to burn your fingers, you're trying not to burn your lips, and you're just holding on to the very last minute parts where you're actually scrunching down the end, right? Just to get, not really because you want to scrunch it down, but only because you want to get more purchase on your tips. <laughs> Skip is just testing you, yes, yes, he probably, knowing that guy, he probably is. I don't know what you guys think, but I, I've, I didn't get to see the, the Mirful episode yet with that, that Skip and Mike one, but traditionally I've found that I enjoy listening to Skip on different podcasts because I think that he, I just think he has, you know, insightful things to say about cigars and, and just the general experience. I don't know what you guys think about that, if maybe if you agree or not, but that's kind of my takeaway. It was really nice for him to send that, uh, that, that box of cigars and stuff from the Weasel Fest last week. That was really great. That Catador de los Pet Petit Gordos, that was really... I haven't, I haven't busted into that box yet. Just because I haven't smoked much this week. I only smoked after last week's show. Actually, I did smoke quite a lot this past weekend because my cousin was in town from Honolulu. So we go to my other cousin Bernardo's house. And every time we would get together, we would smoke and tend to do two or three at a time. And one of, our, one of our other friends was hitting us up with some pretty heavy-duty stuff. Like, one night he brought over these Toro-sized um, Opus X that were probably from, like, 2015. And, you know, here's the thing. Like, I, I, know, I know this is, opinion is probably different than most people, but... And it kind of reinforced to me when I was smoking that 2015 Opus X is that I just didn't... I just don't find the Opus X to be, like, to my, to my palate... But then the next day, our buddy, he brought over the, uh, the Lost City Forbidden X. Whoa, that was hella good, hella good. You know, I've seen that cigar at different shops and I've never had one. So when he was like, here, let's have this one. I was like, oh, thanks, man. I'm like, and wow, I was really, really surprised at how much I enjoyed that. Because I don't know about you guys, but I find that, like when I was in the 90s, when I was, you know, Back then, I, I really smoked a lot of Fuentes, a lot of the double chateaus, uh, and a number of the Chateau Fuentes, Don Colos number threes, um, even the 858s. I always, I always found those green label Fuentes to be really great. In more recent times, like in the 2000s, 2010s, I haven't really found those, those green label Fuentes to my particular liking. Um, so, to, you know, I've always been kind of wondered, like, these lost cities, should I? I tried, but really, uh, it was really, really good. Really, really great. Oh, George is heading out. Batter's run down. Got to hop. Thanks, George, for tuning in. Pretty appreciate you spending that time with us. See you next time. Have a great one. Thanks. Which kind of opens me up to, like, you know, now after trying that Lost City, I'm like, oh, I wonder what the God of Fire is like. Or maybe that one, the... Uh, the Don Carlos, the one that the one in the black tube. That's that's like I think it was it was a tribute to Don Carlos. And then also I was looking and I was at I was at Tobacco Leaf this past weekend and I saw that they had these Julius Caesars, the ones in the uh, in the coffins. I was like, maybe I wonder what that's like too. 
maybe I have to try it. Actually, we're coming up on our one year anniversary. So the show for July 29th will be our one year anniversary. We started the show on July 30th, 2020. So the 29th will be our one year episode. And uh, I'm trying to find a nice cigar for that one. I was thinking about that, uh, that, that black tubo Carlos as being one of them. And Tony said, I'll take an Añejo or Don Carlos or an Opus X every day of the week. Yeah, yeah, the, I hear on that one. And the Lost City, yeah, the Lost City was definitely a phenomenal cigar. Like, I was really, really blown away at, uh, at how good it was. And Ted, Ted, what's going on, man? Good to see you. How's it going? I heard you're in town. We didn't get to see you yet, but uh, or if you're back home, well, hope you had a safe trip back. How are things in Atlanta? Have you, I heard you started shooting again, so that's great. I'm glad to hear that. And Ted's a big cigar smoker down there in Atlanta. What do you say? Are you smoking tonight with the show, or have you smoked at all since you've been up here? All right, so we're coming down to the end of the wire on this one. This is the Zeno Nicaragua Toro. It's been really great. Much, much better than I expected. Oh, still in Baltimore. Oh, good. We have to get together then before you leave. Oh, quit that long time. Okay. <laughs> no, I thought, but I mean, like, I oh, you quit the cigars. Oh, I gotcha, gotcha. Well, I'm glad you tuned in, even though. So we have to go to the uh, to the question of every show that, especially Rusty, always wants to know. Would I buy this again? The Davidoff Nicaragua Toro. Yeah, I would say yes. Yes, absolutely. So the this particular cigar is MSRP is at like. 650 and um, here in Maryland because of the OTP it's about eight something so it's it's a it's a at a decent price point a good price point and um, yeah I would definitely get to get another one of these really enjoyable surprisingly surprisingly so actually and Ted says just hooked up with Mike Flynn oh nice nice yeah Mike was just posting on Facebook that he uh, he left the band that he's been with for several years now and um, I guess moving on to new ventures he even posted that he uh, had a, a, a moment where he was on the big screen at, M at, at uh, I wanted to say PSI net at uh, M&T Bank Stadium that was pretty cool I actually had one of those moments being on the well they almost put me in there when we were shooting this movie called uh, The Replacements with Keanu Reeves and uh, Gene Hackman we were shooting at the old PSI Night Stadium, and uh, one night, I guess, it, we worked really, really long hours, and we would do overnight shoots on that one because we were shooting in the stadium at night, and uh, I think at one point, <laughs> I was taking a nap somewhere, and they were going to put that on the big screen. I was like, oh, gosh, that would have been terribly embarrassing. So, but yes, yeah, so let's do that. We'll say yes Yes, we'd buy it again. Did you get to see Bob while you were in town, when he was in town last week, Ted? Oh, that's good, that's good. All right, so we're kind of towards the very end now. So we're, this is one of those, where it's, so it's not, it's kind of got the, the brightness and a little bit of the acidity, a little bit of acridity as well. And um, I don't know if this is the kind of cigar, like you're saying, Tony, with where you'd like uh, smoke it really like to the very end. But um, I, I'm kind of tempted to only, but I think that's more because I, I want to get the most out of it rather than I necessarily want to smoke all of it. Oh, you went fishing on Sunday. Oh, yes, yes, I saw that. Um, Santiago was the only one that caught fish that day, huh? Nice, nice. 
when they told me they were going to go fishing, Bob was like, I'm going to go fishing. I was like, you're going to go fishing? With Ryan? Oh, okay, got it, got it. I can totally, Ryan is the kind of guy you totally see that wants to fish and chill. I like that. Oh, Osman. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, excellent. I'm glad he got it. I'm glad he got it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Osman must be pretty old now, right? Oh, so it's something. Oh, so he held him for the picture. Okay, that's why I'm confused. Okay. Got it. Yeah, we're going to smoke this to the bed, Ren. Why not? No, oh, sounds good. Sounds great. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Osmond 7, excellent. That's so wonderful. That is really wonderful. Let me look up here. All right, so I guess that's pretty much it. We're pretty much at the end of the cigar. My fingers are starting to burn a little bit. So in the coming weeks, I got the, I got the schedule in the, uh, the show notes below. You can look it up so you can see the cigars that are coming up and we can uh, get them and smoke them all together. Of course, Raul has them all at Tobacco Leaf. So if you need, or need them, pick them up here. Next week, we're going to be smoking the Oscar Valladares Superfly Toro, which has this really crazy like looking graphic. So I'm kind of curious to see that. On July 1st, the week after, we're going to be doing the Hoya Silver Toro from Nicaragua. On the 8th, we're going to go with the LFR, the Lunatic Torch, which is this thick. So it's interesting. They describe this, the Lunatic, as a torch, that the Lunatic Torch as a Toro. But it's a very thick Toro. When you, and the Silver Hoya Toro, they're both Toros, but they're really, really quite different in ring gauge. That, I think that was interesting. And then on the 15th of July, we're going to be doing the Trinidad Espiritu Fundador, the Altadas version of it. And so that's what's coming up. So if you get the chance, definitely pick those up. I finally got a little bit ahead and put, uh, and put all the, uh, the show notes and everything on each of those streams coming up so they'll be easier to find. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. Thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate you spending the time with us. Let me turn on the... There's the, me, the outro music. And uh, thanks again. Thursday night has come to a, a lovely day with this Zeno Nicaragua Toro. I'm going to put that down now. So thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate you spending another Thursday night with me. And uh, be sure to come back next week, 8 p.m. on Thursday night. We'll continue on with the Superfly by Oscar. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Good seeing you too, Ted. Hopefully catch you soon before you leave.